Hello and welcome to Tutorial CU. My name is Yannick and in this video we are going to talk about extension methods. So extension methods are a great way to add additional functionality to existing types without modifying the original code. This is especially very useful if you don't have access to the source code, for example, of a plugin that you're using or well something else but in this video we want to write an extension method for an inbuilt type for the string for example and for a collection so let's get started so here we have a string variable right and now let's create an extension method that gives us the possibility to just capitalize it so that j in this scenario is an uppercase so for an extension method we have to create a static class so that we don't need an instance of the class itself let's call it string extensions now inside here we will now create our extension method, which also for sure has to be static because an extension method always has to be static. Now public static string, let's call it capitalize. And now very important, add this because this is making it an extension method. Now string, let's call it input for example. Let me just bring in the code. It basically just checks if we have any value. If we just submit an empty string, we could just return it. And in any other case, we take the first character and then add the rest of it and return it, right? So we're capitalizing it. Alrighty, now, if we, I would just want to show to you, if we remove the static here, he will for sure complain now because he will say that extension methods must be defined in a non-generic static class. So if we also remove that static here, right? Still the same error. If we remove this, it will start working because now it's pretty much the full class and the default method. So as I said, this, this keyword right here is turning this method into an extension. You can see that if you hover above it, you can see it in white here. It's an extension for the type string. So if you write another extension method for a different type, make sure to, well, pay attention on the return type and on the input type, right? So now that said, we can simply take our string. Let's create a new variable, say like capitalized or cap equals to, let's take our name variable and let's simply call capitalize. This is our extension method. As you can see, it's still highlighted extension, right? We can simply call it like that and we're good to go. And the great thing about it was that we were not forced to modify the string class itself. We simply wrote an extension for that string class, right? Now let's write another extension method for a more complex type. But before we do that, I wanna tell you that we offer a unique online course, which is called the C-Sharp Progress Academy. And it teaches you in depth C-Sharp ASP.NET Core unit testing and even C-Sharp software design pattern skills. We offer a 14 day money back guarantee and I'm absolutely sure that this is the fastest way on how you can progress as a developer. So please go ahead, check it out. The link is in the description below or popping up right now at the top right corner. And if you like this video, give it a thumb up and subscribe to our channel so that you no longer miss any upcoming C-Sharp and .NET related videos that help you become a better developer. Alrighty, let me remove this class right here. Let me remove that one and let me bring in a list here. So we have a list and this list is like a collection, right? An IEnumerable. So let's create a public static class, IEnumerable extension. And inside here we will create a public static, let's say for example, double for calculating the average inside of that list or collection average. And now this, again, we will write an extension for this I enumerable of type integer, for example, right? So you can configure it however you like, but we will make it for the I enumerable of type int. Let's just call it source. There we go. And now let me just bring in the code again. Well, there we go. So we simply check if we have a source, if not argument, not exception, we will throw that. And if we have a source, we will simply like sum everything up and then divide it by the total count. This is like how you create the average, right? Or how you calculate the average. And now, as I said, like a list is of type I enumerable under the hood. So this is why we are able to now take our numbers. So let's say var average equals to numbers dot average. We can call it. That's perfect. Okay, now let's create an int array just to check if it also works. So int array, let's say uh, ints. Well, that was a funny suggestion. Now let's create a new array 
and let's put in like three values, one, two, three in total, that's fine. Okay, so we now have a new int array and let's see if we can call it. So let's say var average ins and let's say equals to ins average. So it is working. So I'm able to call it that way because a list of integers or an array of integers both is an i enumerable under the hood. So this is why it is working for both of them. And again, we were not forced to modify the integer class or the list class or any other third party class that you may are using in your program. You can simply write extension methods in, well, specific classes. So you create an extension class and inside there you create a static extension method by using the this keyword inside of the parameter. So that's it for this video. I hope that you have learned something new. Make sure to subscribe to our channel so that you're always up to date and no longer miss any c and .NET related videos. And definitely check out our c -Shop Progress Academy if you are looking for a c -Shop skill and career boost. So thanks for watching and I'll see you back in the next video.